Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are completely new to this sport and there's a hell of a lot to learn. You know, not just in terms of rigs, but in terms of bait and everything else. And these are what these next few videos are aimed at. You guys that have just started and you want to learn as much as you possibly can about rigs. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain a different rig in each one of these short videos. So I'm going to start with something like the knotless knot rig, a dead simple rig to tie up, but one that's very effective. I'll also try and take you through the chug rig and a couple of other more rigs, as well as show you how to splice lead core safely. And what I'll do is I'll show you how to tie each rig, and more importantly, where best to use each rig, because each rig is, is tailor-made for one sort of situation or a couple of situations, whereas a chug rig will be used in a different situation to a, a, a standard bottom bait knotless knot rig. And if you get that wrong, that's the difference between catching and not catching. So that's what I'm going to do over the course of the next few videos. So if, if you've been fishing for donkey's years, then you probably don't want to see these next few. But if you're just new to the sport and you want to learn and you don't want to buy rigs from the tackle shop anymore, you want to do your own thing, then please watch these videos and, and see what you think. But to start off with, what I want to talk to you about is rig dynamics. Now, although the, all your rigs need to do a similar sort of thing, i.e. the need to hook the fish in the bottom of the mouth, um, preferably on the take, um, but they also need to be good enough to land the fish as well. But they all have a slightly different way of doing these things. Now here I've got three rigs and they all look dead similar because in effect they are similar, you know, they're the same rig but they've got different baits on, but more importantly different weighted baits. Now one's a pop-up, one's a snowman and one's a bottom bait rig and I'll show you the differences between them now. Now the single most important thing about any modern day carp rigs that are designed to hook the fish on the take is this little bit here. The way the, the hook link material kinks out of the eye. Now as you can see here I've used shrink tubing which is a tubing you put over the uh, nozzle of a kettle when it's steaming and you can you can mould it into whatever position you want but it's this angle here that kicks it that causes the hook to turn into the fish's mouth. I mean it, you know in a minute I'll, I'll go on to talk about hair length and how that's important with different buoyances of bait but this if you haven't got this right then your rigs won't work properly. Now the general rule of thumb into getting this is this straight bit of the hook here should point to roughly where the um, where the braid is coming out from. So you can see here, don't don't take into account the point, some say the point, but this is a big point, so it's actually pointing to there. But if you take this straight bit of the hook, it's coming out there, the braid is. So that'll cause the whole lot to flick around. Now in the old days we used to do it with uh, something called a bent hook rig, but that wasn't very safe for the carp and ended up with double hooking and, and all kinds of methods. But most modern day carp rigs, in fact I'll, I'll go to the point of saying every modern day carp rig that's designed to hook the fish on the take will have this. So whether it's a, a choddy, a hinge stiff or this kind of shrink tubing will all cause the hook to turn and flip round and catch hold of the bottom part of the fish's mouth. Now what we've got here, this one's the bottom bait rig. It's, it's just got a little barrel on but it doesn't matter if it's a barrel bait or a round bait or whatever it is. Now if you can imagine that my hand is the fish's mouth and where my other hand is here is the, is the lead, is the weight. This weight will be stationary. So as the fish moves off, you see that the hook's turned around and caught in well, what should be the fish's mouth. So as it moves off, the hook flips around and catches in the mouth. Now, the thing about this rig compared to the other rigs is it's got a large separation in the hair. So the boilie can actually move underneath the shank of the hook like that. And that will help hook the fish simply because the boilie, the weight of the boilie, will help pull the hook down into the fish's mouth. Now, if it was too tight to the hook shank, it might have the opposite effect and not let the hook turn like it should be able to turn. But in this case, because it's a bottom bait, it would drag it all down to the bottom mouth. Now, I know it won't have as much weight in the water and in the fish's mouth as it has in my hand here, but trust me, it does do a similar effect. Now, that hair is probably slightly longer than what I would normally fish. It's probably on the edge of the the sort of length I would normally fish it, so you can fish them slightly shorter than that. But the thing is, it's got to have enough clearance to clear the bend of the hook, otherwise it won't turn properly. It will still turn, but not as well as it would in this situation. And it's it's all these little points and little percentages that equal more fish on the bank. So if you, if you can get a couple of these things right, and the more of these little things you get right, the better. Now the intermediate rig is this one. It's a snowman rig, so the end boiler there is a, is a floating boiler, a pop-up. That one's a bottom bait, so it will sink very slowly and it will just sit up like that off the bottom. So basically that bait, that pop up there is, is, is negating the weight of that bottom bait and some of the hook weight as well. So it's not that important to have a big clearance, but it, it is good to just have a, 
enough clearance to make it give it some natural movement so it can still wash around when the fish swims over it and it can still help the hook turn. So as you can see, same thing again. You've got a, a static weight here, the fish moves off with the boat in its mouth and it's flicked round and got it in the bottom. And that's when the fish will feel the hook, point of the hook panic, hopefully shoot off and that's when you'll have it hooked. Now this one is the third of the rigs, the third of the three rigs, and this one's a pop-up rig. So this one will sit like this. Again, exactly the same rig, but it's just got a little bit of putty on there that'll weight the whole lot down. It'll just sit up like that. Now, on these you can get away with a much more shorter hair, and I, I do prefer a short hair on, on these. You know, I, I like the boiling right next to the hook where possible. Because if you can imagine, when it's all in the fish's mouth, that is effectively floating. So it, it's not going to help drag the hook down. So it doesn't matter how, how tight it is or how far away it is. If you've got it far away, then it's popping up too far off the deck and it's, it's not going to look quite right and the fish can suck it in without properly getting the hook in the mouth. So the best thing to do is, is fish it tight to the hook, but when it pulls across, it will still turn, um, but not quite as effectively, but it will turn a lot more effectively in water when that bait's floating. And the advantage of pop-ups is, they tend to sit clear off the bottom so they're free of all debris and they're easy for the fish to get at and to suck up. So pop-ups can be very effective, but don't ignore the bottom boats or anything else. So now I'll get on and show you how to tie a few of these rigs up.